Frederick Douglass was the most photographed American man in the 19th century as a way to create a corrective image about race and American life. Being seen accurately by the camera was a key to represent, representational justice for him. The probability is high that he was photographed by white men, but Frederick Douglass took this opportunity to create a clear vision of himself. He didn't smile as he didn't want to be portrayed as a happy slave. And he didn't use props to avoid distraction. He took agency over his image to create visibility for his story and others like him. How would you guys relate to this statement as photographers? My first experience in the industry at all, uh, again, fortunate, I had a few people early in my life to kind of lead me the way. I had an older sister who's eight years older, so this is like enough age to like look up to someone and like get a vision of what it might be in the future. Um, she was in advertising when I started getting to college. So right off the bat, I started having an idea of what that looks like, started pitching brands, just having fun, like helping her make work. Um, and in that process of getting a foot in and working with other people in that area, this is 2000 and, uh, this is 2003. I started to get these ideas thrown at me where, you know, be careful about what kind of work you make. Don't make it too black if you really want to be successful. Okay? So, like, that sounds messed up. Um, it is. <laughs> but um, it was also just the reality at the time. And those people were being very honest with me. It very much affected the way I, well, it affected me in certain ways that I made work. I was conscious of certain things at the time. It wasn't that I was choosing not to shoot black people, but I was also looking for a lot of other things outside that. Um, so, you know, fast forward now, it's 2019. Um, I've been in the industry for like 14 years now. Um, there's a huge new wave of work, and like it's, it's, it's trying to balance, like, who do you want to be, who are you, what, what feels good to you, what's, who are you as a person, but also like what's being portrayed. Um, one of my biggest things, because it had such an influence on me, is it's a hard battle to get into a situation as a black artist, black photographer specifically, who's taking images of other people. I don't want to get pigeonholed. It's so easy to start only getting black work. And I'm open about that conversation even with my clients. You know, I have to be, because if we're not going to have the conversation, then um, I know it's coming. And it is. Like, you know, this year has been really great for me. Um, it's opened up a lot of new work for me. Um, and I'm conscious of it. I'm, I'm getting a few other things, but I'm suddenly getting a lot of black work. <laughs> you know? And I don't want to be upset by that. Because it's, it's great that I get to do it. But I also understand what that relationship is and how I'm being hired. Um, so, you know, I'm very conscious, and I try to have the conversation, and s certain days we want to say Instagram doesn't mean anything, a lot of days it really does, and I'm conscious there too, and um, you know what, it's to the point where I, you know, I, I'm really picking and choosing about when and how I have to post it, you know? Um, I want to spread myself out, and the image for me is that um, I'm not just a black photographer, I shoot a lot of different things, you know? So yeah, it's constant. So as um, a creative director and um, a stylist, I am very conscious of, um, I, I think I start my work from the point of, um, you know, uh, needing to tell the story, um, especially um, some of the editorial um, 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 shoots that we've sort of uh, done at Nasty Boy, um, while they've been the most impactful aspect of Nasty Boy, because uh, truly, Pictures and visuals do tell a thousand stories. Um, I found that I was able to use um, makeup, fashion, and um, you know, you know, clothes and all that as um, a medium to tell a bigger story. Um, whether it's um, you know questioning um, masculinity or um, you know the you know, gender expectations and all that, or um, 
telling stories about um, the nature of um, you know friendships in Nigeria between because um, I of course grew up gay in Nigeria and I remember feeling my close I mean the close, closest to my female cousins because in some ways we had so much in common I I was I think more than my brothers uh, more in touch with my um, family tendencies. And so with my, uh, there was that um, camaraderie that I found with, with my um, female cousins. And so um, I've realized that for many um, gay boys back in Nigeria, um, you know, there is, there is a kind of friendship that exists between them that is, that is platonic, that is not romantic or sexual in any manner with women or girls their age. And um, um, one of the pictures there that we shot was um, sort of depicting that sort of um, you know, friendship. And then another one um, um, that we shot, Some Boys on the Beach, um, was a story uh, you know, sort of, um, about boys who were in the in Nigeria and, and, and you know, how Nigeria continues to um, deny their existence. You know, so it's called um, um, what's it called? Um, <laughs> um, nowhere to call home, I think. Yes. Um, so it's about boys like that, and and they very much exist. And so it was about creating that space for them. And um, the, the the stories, have, especially specifically, was for ID magazine, and, and I think we focused on the interview was also focused on that um, on, on that subject. So, as much as I can, I try to 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 use um, um, the visuals that I direct and, and style and whatnot to tell a story that is um, impactful and has like a real life. Um, I really like appreciate you bringing Frederick Douglass like into the space because he's definitely like one of my like photo heroes and intellectual heroes and in thinking about photography and um, you know I feel like he was really one of the first books to really like interrogate and think about the transformative potential of images and also the really like complicated relationship between um, like the photographer and the sitter and the viewer. Um, and I feel like his legacy is such an example of the ways in which like black folks have been since photography's inception resisting the white gaze in like explicit and um, subtle ways. Um, and I think the example that you lifted up is such uh, a great example of the ways in which he did that using his agency to really interrupt the ways in which white folks were portraying black people um, with the cam with cameras at the time. Um, and I think he also, like his his legacy also really shows kind of the, complica the complicated nature of visibility um, that I think, I think you're, you sharing your like story about Nasty Boy is such a, a great example of that, on that like on one hand, um, increased visibility can be a tool for like to affirm identities, to kind of correct historic omissions to memorialize stories that are silent, but then at the same time, increased visibility can lead to targeted violence against those communities or, um, or, or kind of similar to what you were saying about kind of being siloed into this like, relegated to this like one space in the industry of, of then you become like the sole representative for that group and your group and your identity is presented kind of as a monolith um, and I think we're seeing that so much today, like even with so much like trans POC visibility, like there's still um, like hella violence and brutality against the trans trans women and, and trans POC um, women specifically. And um, and like how can we hold both of those like complexities, right? Like that there is immense words saturated with visibility, but at the same time there's still these um, these oppressive systems in place and like being able to like kind of distinguish. I think sometimes we get like so, um, I think partially because of social media and like the, the kind of um, currency that visibility has today, just like with the way we communicate, we get so like 
alert with the optics of things and um, being able to really tell the difference between when something is um, aesthetically like creating the optics of diversity or inclusion, but like what is really getting at the root of the problem and like being able to make the distinction between that is, is super important. 